Next I'm going to talk about the visual effects of the film and honestly they were flawless. I absolutely loved that Grand Moff Tarkin was in this film, though honestly I thought he would only be a cameo seeing as Peter Cushing is dead, but it turns out that he actually has a pretty big role in the film. The conflict and mutual hatred between him and Krennic is great and I love the contrast between Tarkin's posh and calm demeanour and Krennic's more working class nature and volatility. The way they recreated Peter Cushing was pretty incredible, but due to the fact that he was in the film for so long, the CG effects of his face did get a little distracting sometimes, and he did feel a little bit out of place, but I am just so glad he was in there, because Tarkin is epic. Leia received the same facial recreation, but she was only a cameo, and a great cameo at that, so the CG was very limited. Like, don't get me wrong, the CG on their faces was great, but I'm just worried that in a few years time it might look a bit strange and out of place. Speaking of cameos, there was actually quite a lot, but not a complete overload of them. Look, I don't go to Chinatown, I don't drive wackos, and I ain't afraid of no ghosts. For example, when Jin and Cassian are running through Jettis City, they run into Cornelius Evazan and Ponda Baba, who you may recognize as the He doesn't like you. I'm sorry. I don't like you either. Jerk from Mos Eisley Cantina in A New Hope. Senator Bail Organa is also present in the film, along with rebel leader Mon Mothma. Nice to see some familiar faces, though I wish that we could have seen a scene on Alderaan, because I don't know if you are aware, but Alderaan and Scarf are my two favourite planets in Star Wars, and they're two of the only three planets to get blown up by the Death Star in the entire galaxy. Come on, Star Wars, go blow up Naboo or something. The Gungans are all secretly Sith, but just stay away from my Scarif. Bail Organa also references Obi-Wan, saying that he could request the help of a Jedi in hiding that helped him in the Clone Wars. Red Squadron was also present during the Battle of Scarf. we'll talk about that later, and Red 5 gets blown up, leaving the position vacant for Luke Skywalker. We hear Cassian and Jin mention a Black Saber, which could be relating to the Dark Saber, an ancient weapon of the Old Republic used by Pre Vizsla in the Clone Wars, which is my favourite Star Wars weapon. I mean, look at it, it's like a black hole sword. I want one! The ghost from Star Wars Rebels was teased in one of the trailers, and some of Saw Gerrera's Rebels were playing Daedric, the game 3PO and Chewie were playing on the Falcon in the New Hope. A few of the things we've come to expect in all the Star Wars movies were present there too. The Wilhelm scream. <laughs> I've got a bad feeling about this was being said by Ketusha before Jin told him to shut up. Really funny. But one cameo that I knew would be there really did bother me. C-3PO and RTD2. Don't get me wrong, I love those droids, and they still hold their reputation as being the only live Star Wars characters to be present in all eight Star Wars films. Wait, eight? Eight Star Wars films? That's eight more than the amount of times Liverpool have won the Premier League. Oh! But yeah, they appeared in Yavin 4, which was great to have back, especially that shot when the Rebel is scanning the Ewing just like he did to the Falcon in A New Hope, when Jin and co were taking off the Scarif and 3PO says to R2 something like, Scarif? They're going to Scarif? They never tell me anything. And it just felt so out of place and unnecessary. Like, it's not funny, it just completely breaks the flow of the film. It felt very shoehorned in, and as much as I wanted a 3PO and R2 cameo, that was really not how I wanted it to go. Though this is only a minor thing. Now I think it's time to talk about the only reason that at least 50% of Rogue One's audience went to see the film. Biss down the space monkey. No? Oh yeah, sorry, I made a typo in the script that's actually supposed to say DARTH Freaking Vader! Yes guys, he's back! Tell a friend! And holy squid biscuits, it was the coolest I have ever seen Darth Vader in any of the Star Wars movies. He's only in three scenes effectively, but those three scenes were awesome! With one of them being, oh, 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 oh we'll talk about that in a sec. We first get introduced to Vader when Krennic visits Vader's castle on Mustafar. Wait, come again? Vader's castle? On Mustafar? Well, it's official. Transylvader is a thing. <laughs> Imagine if Count Dooku lived there. Count Dooku will give you a spooku! But this is actually quite cool because in the initial concept art by Ralph McQuarrie for The Empire Strikes Back, Vader was supposed to have a castle. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just can't. Like, imagine Vader rising out of his back to tank like Count Dracula. <laughs> Gosh, okay, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> So it's nice that they brought Vader's castle back to life. And we see that shot that everyone was super hyped for, finding out who that hooded dude was. Was it Vader? Was it Emperor Sheev? Or the Inquisitor? Or Krennic? But no, it turned out to just be Hooded Wrinkle Man number 523. Ah yes! Hooded Wrinkle Man number 523 is my second favourite Star Wars character. My favourite is Captain James T. Kirk. And Krennic asks Vader for a promotion. Vader chokes him a bit and then says, Be careful not to choke on your ambitions, Director Krennic. Vader made a pun! Go watch! this movie! And he appears again at the Battle of Scarf when the rebel ships try to make the jump to hyperspace and they just hyperspeed right into Vader's Star Destroyer emerging from hyperspace. It was hilarious. And then, the best ever scene of cinema ever happens. The rebels are running through a corridor with the Death Star plans and the door jams shut 
And then they start panicking. They turn around, and from the smoky darkness, Vader ignites his lightsaber. Then he slices his way through the rebels, slamming them off the walls with the force, disarming them all, slicing a guy open whilst opening a door, and oh my gosh, when it happened, the entire cinema audience just all simultaneously gave this massive gasp, and then perfection happened. Finally, a Vader killing spree. It happened, I am a happy nerd. Now I know that some people would have wanted to see more of Vader, but guys, this movie is about characters we don't know about. It's supposed to be a pioneer trying to introduce us to a new formula of Star Wars films. If it just had Vader in every scene, then there would be nothing fresh. It didn't take away from the other characters, and it gave us fans the Vader killing spree that we wanted. No, needed. Thank you, Star Wars. My faith has been restored in you after the dark times. One thing I would say about this film is that so many of the shots in the trailer aren't even in the film. It's like the movie version of No Man's Sky. Oh gosh, no, I didn't just compare Star Wars to No Man's Sky. Please forgive me. But then I googled it, and it turned out that this movie had a lot of reshoots and chopping and changing towards the end, which does come through a little bit towards the start. Some of the character introductions feel a little rushed with a whole lot of stuff crammed in so we can get to the good stuff later on. Again, this didn't bother me too much. I was still able to follow the story and found the first half enjoyable, but I understand that to people who haven't theorised about this movie to the extent that I have, may have found it a little rushed to the start. But guys, it is a little misleading when half of your shots in the final trailer don't make it into the movie. Finally, I want to talk about the Battle of Scarf. Guys, this was so well done. I honestly think it's my favourite Star Wars battle. The action and the visuals were phenomenal. All about brute force. The force ain't helping no one now. Well, except for when it prevents Chirrut from being shot by the most deadly hitmen in the galaxy. But aside from that, it was all sheer brute force. It was incredible. Explosions going off everywhere. Masses and masses of dead bodies piling up all around the place. And the beaches and trees of Scarf are just beautiful. And then up in space, a fat Admiral Ackbar is commanding about 10 X-Wings when a whole legion of TIE Fighters emerge from the shield gate, and a ship called a Hammerhead Cruiser smashes into a Star Destroyer and it tears into another one, crashing into the shield gate. It was absolutely amazing. It was the most intense battle I've ever seen, and I've never felt more emotionally involved in a film where they're desperately trying to get the shield gates open whilst main characters are getting killed left, right, and centre, and then the AT-ACTs arrive, and Gareth Edwards demonstrates his skill at making things feel so huge as the Rebels run around the feet of these massive walkers. Guys, just thinking about it has given me goosebumps. It is honestly the most incredible action sequence I have ever seen, and then having the Vader massacre scene right after it with the Tanit 4 just escaping after Scarif and everyone I have ever loved <coughs> Kremic are obliterated, I left the cinema wondering if I had died and went to heaven. Then I realised that I had spilled popcorn all over me in the excitement, and I realised I was still in this sucky old universe. But guys, wow, that is literally all I can say about this movie. That and the five pages of script that I've written for this review of me ranting about Star Wars, but in all seriousness, for me, Rogue One was a near perfect movie. It had great characters, besides whatever Saul Guerrero was, incredible visuals and action sequences, a fresh gritty storyline capturing the panic, fear and uncertainty of war, beautiful set pieces, a good score, and Darth freaking Vader cutting up rebels like he's making a stew. Yes, it had one or two minor flaws, like an out of place cameo, slightly rushed first act, a few lackluster characters, but guys, I have fallen in love with this movie, and as it stands, this is my favourite of all the Star Wars films. So I'm going to give Star Wars Episode 3.5 Rogue One a Star Wars Story a 9.8 out of 10. Guys, if it isn't obvious, I love this film. But what do you think of it? Was it a medal worthy success or was it a steaming pile of bantha fodder? Leave your thoughts of the film in the comments section down below. Don't worry, I won't judge your opinion, unless it's wrong. If you enjoyed this review, then be sure to give the video a like. And remember, if you want to see more, then hit that subscribe button and I'll see you late. Uh.